Claude Frédéric Bastiat was a French classical liberal theorist, political economist, a member of the French Assembly. He was notable for developing the important economic concept of opportunity cost, and for introducing the parable of the broken window or the glazier's fallacy. His ideas have provided a basis for libertarianism and the Austrian school. Biography Bastiat was born in Bayonne, Aquitaine, a port town in the south of France on the Bay of Biscay, on 30 June 1801. His father, Pierre Bastiat, was a prominent businessman in the town. His mother died during 1808 when Frédéric was seven years old. His father relocated inland to the town of Mugrin with Frédéric following soon afterward. The Bastiat estate in Mugrin had been acquired during the French Revolution and had previously belonged to the Marquis of Poyan. Pierre Bastiat died during 1810, leaving Frédéric an orphan. He was fostered by his paternal grandfather and his maiden aunt, Justine Bastiat. He attended a school in Bayonne, but his aunt thought poorly of it and so enrolled him in the school St. Seba. At age 17, he left school at Sorosa to work for his uncle in his family's export business. It was the same company for which his father had been a partner. Economist Thomas de Lorenzo suggests that this experience was crucial to Bastiat's later work since it allowed young Frédéric to acquire first-hand knowledge of how regulation can affect markets. Sheldon Richman notes that he came of age during the Napoleonic Wars. With their extensive government intervention in economic affairs, Bastiat began to develop an intellectual interest. He no longer wished to work with his uncle and desired to go to Paris for formal studies. This hope never came true as his grandfather was in poor health and wished to go to the Mugrin estate. Bastiat accompanied him and cared for him. The next year, when Bastiat was 24, his grandfather died, leaving the young man the family estate, thereby providing him with the means to further his theoretical inquiries. Bastiat developed intellectual interests in several areas including philosophy, history, politics, religion, travel poetry, political economy and biography. After the middle-class revolution of 1830, Bastiat became politically active and was elected Justice of the Peace of Mugrin during 1831 and to the Council General of Lands during 1832. He was elected to the National Legislative Assembly soon after the French Revolution of 1848. His public career as an economist began only during 1844 when his first article was published in the journal Des Economistes during October of that year. It was ended by his untimely death during 1850. Bastiat contracted tuberculosis, probably during his tours throughout France to promote his ideas and that illness eventually prevented him from making further speeches and ended his life. During the autumn of 1850, he was sent to Italy by his doctors. He first travelled to Pisa, then on to Rome. On 24 December 1850, Bastiat called those with him to approach his bed. He murmured twice the words, the truth, then died. Works Bastiat was the author of many works on economics and political economy, generally characterized by their clear organization, forceful argumentation, and acerbic wit. Economist Murray Rothbard wrote that Bastiat was indeed a lucid and superb writer, whose brilliant and witty essays and fables to this day are remarkable and devastating demolitions of protectionism and of all forms of government subsidy and control. He was a truly scintillating advocate of an unrestricted free market. However, Bastiat himself declared that subsidy should be available, but limited. Under extraordinary circumstances, for urgent cases, the state should set aside some resources to assist certain unfortunate people to help them adjust to changing conditions. Among his better-known works is Economic Sophisms. A series of essays which contain the defense of free trade and many strongly warded attacks on status policies. Bastiat wrote the work while living in England to advise the shapers of the French Republic on perils to avoid. 
Economic Sophisms was translated and adapted for an American readership during 1867 by the economist and historian of money Alexander Del Mayer, writing under the pseudonym Emil Walter. Economic Sophisms and the Candlemaker's Petition contained within Economic Sophisms is the satirical parable known as the Candlemaker's Petition in which candle makers and tallow producers lobby the Chamber of Deputies of the French July monarchy to block out the sun to prevent its unfair competition with their products. Also included in the sophisms is a facetious petition to the king asking for a law forbidding the usage of everyone's right hand, based on a presumption by some of his contemporaries that more difficulty means more work and more work means more wealth. The Law Bastiat's most famous work, however, is The Law, originally published as a pamphlet during 1850. It defines, through development, a just system of laws and then demonstrates how such law facilitates a free society. In The Law, he wrote that everyone has a right to protect his person, his liberty, and his property. The state should be only a substitution of a common force for individual forces to defend this right. Justice has precise limits, but if government power extends further into philanthropic endeavors, government becomes so limitless that it can grow endlessly. The resulting statism is based on this triple hypothesis the total inertness of mankind, the omnipotence of the law, and the infallibility of the legislator, the public then becomes socially engineered by the legislator and must bend to the legislator's will, like, the clay to the potter, I do not dispute their right to invent social combinations, to advertise them, to advocate them, and to try them upon themselves, at their own expense and risk but I do dispute their right to impose these plans upon us by law, by force, and to compel us to pay for them with our taxes. Bastiat posits that the law becomes perverted when it punishes one's right to self-defense in favor of another's right to legalize plunder, which, he defines as, if the law takes from some persons what belongs to them, and gives it to other persons to whom it does not belong. See if the law benefits one citizen at the expense of another by doing what the citizen himself cannot do without committing a crime. Bastiat was thus against redistribution. What is seen and what is unseen, in his 1850 essay, See quon ni voit pa, through the parable of the broken window. He introduced the concept of opportunity cost in all but name. This term was not invented until over 60 years after his death during 1914 by Friedrich von Wieser. Debate with Proudhon He also famously engaged in a debate between 1849 and 1850 with Pierre-Joseph Proudhon about the legitimacy of interest. As Robert LaRue argued, Bastiat had the conviction that Proudhon's doctrine was the complete antithesis of any serious approach. Proudhon famously lost his temper and declared to Bastiat, Your intelligence is asleep, or rather it has never been awake. You are a man for whom logic does not exist. You do not hear anything. You do not understand anything, you are without philosophy, without science, without humanity, your ability to reason, like your ability to pay attention and make comparisons is zero, scientifically, Mr. Bastiat, you are a dead man, views. Bastiat asserted that the sole purpose of government is to protect the right of an individual to life, liberty, and property, and why it is dangerous and morally wrong for government to interfere with an individual's other personal matters. From this, Bastiat concluded that the law cannot defend life, liberty, and property if it promotes legal or legalized plunder, which he defined as using government force and laws to take something from one individual and give it to others. In the law, Bastiat explains that if the privileged classes or socialists use the government for legalized plunder, this will encourage the other socio-economic class to also use legal plunder, and that the correct response to both the socialists and the corporatists is to cease all legal plunder. Bastiat also explains in the law why his opinion is that the law cannot defend life, liberty, and property if it promotes socialist policies.
when used to obtain legalized plunder for any group, he says, the law is perverted against the only things it is supposed to defend. Bastiat was also a strong supporter of free trade. He was inspired by and routinely corresponded with Richard Cobden and the English Anti-Corn Law League and worked with free trade associations in France because of his stress on the role of consumer demand in initiating economic progress. Bastiat has been described by Mark Thornton, Thomas Di Lorenzo, and other economists as a forerunner of the Austrian school. In his Economic Harmonies, Bastiat states that, We cannot doubt that self-interest is the mainspring of human nature. It must be clearly understood that this word is used here to designate a universal, incontestable fact, resulting from the nature of man, and not an adverse judgment, as would be the word selfishness. Thornton posits that Bastiat, through taking this position on the motivations of human action, demonstrates a pronounced Austrian flavor. One of Bastiat's most important contributions to economics was his admonition to the effect that good economic decisions can be made only by taking into account the full picture, that is, economic truths should be arrived at by observing not only the immediate consequences, that is, benefits or liabilities, of an economic decision, but also by examining the long-term second and third consequences. Additionally, one must examine the decision's effect not only on a single group of people or a single industry but on all people and all industries in the society as a whole. As Bastiat famously put it, an economist must take into account both what is seen and what is not seen. Bastiat's rule was later expounded and developed by Henry Hazlitt in his work Economics in One Lesson, in which Hazlitt borrowed Bastiat's trenchant broken window fallacy and went on to demonstrate how it applies to a wide variety of economic falsehoods. Negative railroad A famous section of economic sophisms concerns the way that tariffs are inherently counterproductive. Bastiat posits a theoretical railway between Spain and France that is built in order to reduce the cost of trade between the two countries. This is achieved, of course, by making goods move to and from the two nations faster and more easily. Bastiat demonstrates that this situation benefits both countries' consumers because it reduces the cost of shipping goods, and therefore reduces the price at market for those goods. However, each country's producers begin to criticize their governments because the other country's producers can now provide certain goods to the domestic market at reduced price. Domestic producers of these goods are afraid of being out-competed by the newly viable industry from the other country. So, these domestic producers demand that tariffs be enacted to artificially raise the cost of the foreign goods back to their pre-railroad levels, so that they can continue to compete. Bastiat makes two significant statements here. Even if the producers in a society are benefited by these tariffs, the consumers in that society are clearly hurt by the tariffs, as they are now unable to secure the goods they want at the low price at which they should be able to secure them. The tariffs completely negate any gains made by the railroad and therefore make it essentially pointless. To further demonstrate his statements, Bastiat suggests, in a classic reductio ad absurdum, that, rather than enacting tariffs, the government should simply destroy the railroad anywhere that foreign goods can outcompet to local goods, since this would be just about everywhere. He goes on to suggest that this government should simply build a broken or negative railroad right from the start, and not waste time with tariffs and rail building. Bastiat's tomb. Bastiat died in Rome and is buried at San Luigi dei Francesa in the center of that city. He declared on his deathbed that his friend Gustav de Molendari was his spiritual heir. Bastiat in English translation. 1869. Capital and Interest. Translator unknown. The following titles were originally published by the Foundation for Economic Education in Irvington on Hudson, NY, and are made available online by the Library of Economics and Liberty. 1996. Economic Sophisms, Trans, and Dead. 
by Arthur Goddard, with introduction by Henri Hazlitt, 1995, Selected Essays on Political Economy, Trans, by Seymour Cain, George B. The Hazar, ed., with introduction by Friedrich Hayek, 1995, The Law, Trans, by Seymour Cain, with introduction by George B. The Hazar, 1998, The Law, Trans, by Dean Russell, with introduction by Walter E. Williams and foreword by Sheldon Richman, 1996, Economic Harmonies, Trans, by W. Hayden Boyers, George B. The Hazar, ed., with introduction by Dean Russell. A collection of Bastiat's major works is available from the Ludwig von Mises Institute. 2007. The Bastiat Collection, Volume 1 and Volume 2 Ludwig von Mises Institute. The Man and the Statesman, The Correspondence and Articles on Politics Jacques de Ganin. General Editor, Introduction by Jacques de Ganin and Jean-Claude Paul de Jean, Denis O'Keefe, Translation Editor, David Dem, Hart, Academic Editor, Liberty Fund, Book Overview, Bastiat, Frédéric, Selected Essays on Political Economy, Translated from the French by Seymour Kane, Edited by George B. The Hazar, Introduction by F.A. Hayek, Irvington on Hudson, Foundation for Economic Education, ISBN 0-910614-156, retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat in French Bastiat, Frédéric, Propriété ALOI, Justice A Fraternité, Paris, Guillaume Nacie, Retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat, Frédéric, Latar, More Detergent, Paris, Guillaume Nacie, Retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat, Frédéric, Incomptabilités Parlementaires, Paris, Guillaume Nacie, Retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat, Frédéric, Pig se liberté au la budget républicain, Paris, Guillaume Nacie, Retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat, Frédéric, Protectionisme et communisme, Paris, Guillaume Nacie, Retrieved 12 May 2012, Bastiat, Frédéric, Uvers Economiques, Libre et Change, Textes Présentes par Florin Afdalian, Paris, PUF, ISBN 2-13037861-7, Bastiat, Frédéric, Sophisms Economiques, Bibliothèque Classique de la Liberté, Préface de Michel Letter, Paris, Les Belles Lettres, ISBN 978-2-251-39038-3, Bastiat, Frédéric, Pamphlets, Bibliothèque Classique de la Liberté, Préface de Michel Letter, Paris, Les Belles Lettres, ISBN 978-2-251-39049-9.